Christmas Dies Tonight. Did David Gordon Green write this? I, I, you know, dies tonight, anything with the dies tonight within the sentence is always and forever going to remind me of the horrible writing that was Halloween Kills, specifically the slogan, Evil Dies Tonight. There's a character in this movie that says, Christmas dies tonight. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Whatever, it's just, just a thought. Something I even wrote it down. I said, yeah, Christmas dies tonight. I wrote that down. Okay, so the movie Violent Night. I went to go see it this afternoon for showtime. It's five o'clock. Uh, the theater had quite a few people in it. I mean, it wasn't packed, but there weren't just only a handful either. I'm curious to see how well this movie's going to do this weekend. So I feel a little mixed about this, and there's a, a couple of reasons. I was hearing a bunch of good things about it on Twitter from people who had been watching it, not like official critic type people or whatever, because the official critics have given this sort of a mediocre-ish rating, like 66%, which is certified fresh. The audience in general likes it more than the critics, which I, you know, I can see why. It's a pretty fun film. It's lighthearted, but at the same time, it's quite bloody and violent. This is not a family-friendly Christmas movie. Think um, Home Alone with Santa on steroids. There were a lot of Home Alone type elements woven uh, throughout the film, especially with the character of the little girl. And so I think I went into it with expectations that were higher than maybe they should have been. And that's not to say this is a bad movie. So don't, don't think that that's where this is coming from. I did not, not enjoy the film. I didn't not enjoy the film. <laughs> I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I thought I would. And so that was kind of, you know, I, I feel like maybe it was just some of the hype that was building about it on Twitter made me go into it. Think, oh, I'm going to love this film. I really should learn my lesson from things like that and just sort of take a lot of movies, just go in with hardly any expectation at all. And I feel like in a lot of ways, maybe I'll come away from them with more enjoyment. So, I don't know, whatever. So the premise of the movie is, and if you've seen the trailer, you already know what the premise is, Santa Claus is real, and he happens to be at this place where some people come in to take the family hostage because the family's really rich, and these people have decided that they want to steal from them. And so, the little girl, she believes in Santa. There's this communication between her and Santa as it shows in the trailer. She has a walkie-talkie. He happens to hear her communication. And so they start up this dialogue. She believes right away who he is, you know, because she's just this idealistic little child. And, you know, the whole thing about parents and the lies they tell their children at Christmas. <laughs> and how adults don't believe, but children do. And so stuff like that. But anyway... I was going somewhere with this. Where the heck was I going with it? Shoot. Oh, I know where I was going with it. I was going to say the the comedy in here, it, it feels a bit sl sort of slapsticky-ish. Like I, like I mentioned Home Alone, like Home Alone on steroids, Home Alone really bloody and violent. And the family... The normal family, which is this this wife and the husband and their child, and then the other family, these people here. This is the sister of the man and her kid and then her latest boyfriend, and he's like this dumb actor or whatever. This is the mother, the matriarch of the family. And you guys, I did not realize who that was until later when I saw her name. Uh, like... On, on the web or something attached to this movie. That's Beverly D'Angelo. Holy cow. I, I noticed right away as soon as I saw her, wow, this woman has had a whole bunch of work done and it doesn't look very good. Like it looks painful. And it really surprised me to find out that 
that that was her. Anyway, that's Beverly D'Angelo. She looks nothing like herself. So the family, the matriarch, super rich woman, her daughter, her daughter's son, they're all like these over-the-top sort of caricatures of idiotic rich people who have pretty much no redeeming qualities. It was so over the top. It was like, it, it was so over the top. It was comical. It was supposed to be over the top and ridiculous. And I guess that's just because this movie is over the top and ridiculous. And it is fundamentally a comedy. So you're going to have this, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, these people in this family, they have no redeeming qualities and blah, blah, blah. But you're not supposed to like them. They're so idiotic, it's comedic. And I guess that's the point. But there are a lot of moments of comedy in here. There's also a lot of moments of blood and killing. And this is, um, well, this Santa, you don't want to get on his bad side, let's just say. Something that I found interesting about this version of Santa which I, I, I like more than the typical standard version of Santa that you see in a lot of the movies, the lovable big bear of a guy. Uh, he is kind of like a Santa Claus version of Hopper. I feel like David Harbour is getting typecast into this sort of um, big bear type gruff heart full of gold or heart of gold character rough around the edges who has a soft spot for little kids. And he just, he reminded me of Hopper in here because that was the type of character he played. His Santa was pretty badass though, probably a little bit more badass than Hopper, but I thought it was interesting how they go into his past and Santa and how he can do the things he does. And something that I did like was that there are multiple times where he indicates that he can't really explain why he's able to do the stuff that he does. He just does it. And then they delve way back into his past, like way, way back. But they don't really get into the nitty gritty of how things got started with him, how he got these abilities that he got. He's not really invulnerable to injury because he gets severely injured in this film. And so it's like he's human and he can suffer injury, but he's not fully human because he's very old. And they showed that he had a life before he was Santa. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But there was this one scene in the trailer or one moment in the trailer that I noticed. Um, I was gathering some pictures for the review. And there's a line he apparently said in the trailer. Now, I never watched the trailer all the way through. I only saw bits and pieces of it in the movie theater or whatever. I missed the part where apparently there's a scene at the very beginning of the trailer in the bar where he says something like, I started the whole damn thing. That was not in the movie from what I can recall. I think I would have remembered that if he had said it and he didn't. I mean, he basically, he's not hiding that he's Santa. He openly admits to the barmaid or whatever and it shows that in the trailer. She says, you're not gonna drive or something like that. And he says, well, I steer a little, but the reindeer do most of the work or whatever, I'm paraphrasing. So he's not really trying to hide who he is. So I find it interesting that they remove that line. Maybe the reason that they remove that line is because they don't really go into detail as to why and how the whole thing got started. You just saw part of his past. You saw little flashbacky things. He's got these tattoos and stuff on him. I don't know if that's part of what gives him his power or if it's something from his past or whatever, but they just don't go into detail about it. They leave a lot of it as a mystery. And I guess that's about as good a way you can handle this sort of storyline because, you know, how can you explain it and make it make any sort of sense? Because it doesn't make sense. So the best way is say, well, it's magic or I can't explain it. It's just Christmas magic. Okay, well, just leave it at that then. I guess that's the best way you can deal with it. But anyway, um, as a whole, uh, I, I did enjoy it. I Another thing I liked was that the fight scenes, they were messy and chaotic. And he wasn't like the super badass invulnerable sort of character 
that I think I went in there feeling like he was going to be portrayed as. He wasn't. Like I said, he was he prone to hurt. And yet at the same time, he was pretty kick-ass. And the comedy in here, you know, some moments were pretty laugh out loud. The violence, definitely a lot of violence, a lot of blood, a lot of injury. The little girl getting involved with her home alone type sort of antics um, felt a bit cartoonish, but at the same time, felt a bit cartoonish and definitely reminiscent of Home Alone, except with an edge because the stuff that was happening was um, causing terrible injury, <laughs> like horrible injury, not the cartoony injury that you saw in the Home Alone movies. But anyway, probably if there, if I had a major complaint about it, it would be that the best parts about this movie um, was, or the best part about this movie was David Harbour's portrayal of Santa Claus. The little girl did a fine job with her acting. She, she was okay. Everybody was all right with their acting. They were fine. David Harbour is sort of, you know, the standout star of the show for this but the parts that were my least favorite were the sort of hokey childish i believe in santa you know we have to believe and i believe and do you believe yes i believe i was like okay you know and 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 some of those little moments like okay it just it fit but at the same time, it felt like it didn't because it felt like, oh, this is a little child, sweet child's movie. And then, but at the same time, we're doing all this killing and horrible stuff. And this Christmas music that was playing when there's death and destruction happening. It was, I mean, I guess that's part of the comedy of it, you know? And so I just, it, it was, it was funny, but it felt like it didn't fit at the same time. And I guess that's probably the whole point. And that was part of the comedy of it. So that's just kind of like the only thing I can think of to say about it at, at this point. You know, in general, I liked it not as much as I thought I would. David Harbour was the best part about this movie. The kid stuff part was kind of hokey and sort of just, eh. but I certainly think it's worth a watch. It's a fun Christmas film. It's the type of Christmas film I would rather watch as opposed to your typical Christmas movie because this is just, this has more appeal to me than something that's like fluffy and sweet and happy and everything. I prefer to see things like this. I wouldn't mind watching it again. In fact, I'll probably go see it again with Arturo if he wants to go watch it. Is it my favorite Christmas oriented action movie? No. That would probably have to be Die Hard unless I am completely blanking out on any other Christmas themed, okay. That movie with um, what I was blinking out on, I was trying to remember was the long kiss goodnight. That sort of takes place around the Christmas holidays, though it doesn't feel like it's as much of a Christmas themed movie as, let's say, Die Hard. But this suffices. It's enjoyable. If you like David Harbour, if you like Santa Claus stuff, if you like Santa Claus and violent stuff, if you like a home alone but very violent, then you'll probably really enjoy this film. Uh, I don't, I'm not sorry I watched it. I'm just wishing I could have enjoyed it a ton more than I did, but that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. It was worth it just for David Harbour. I'll say that much. He certainly does steal the show in this movie. And I like this take on Santa much more than any other take. So I consider that a positive, I guess. Anyway, I don't think I have too much more to say. So I'm going to wrap this up and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.